Your focus on the farm is most likely your crops and your income, but chances are, if you're a farmer, you've got a shelter belt around your place or maybe around several of your locations. And the big thing here that we try talking to people about all the time is, look, we want to have great weed control, not just in our fields, but everywhere. We want to make sure that everything we're doing looks good. It's just important for us in rural America to make sure that we're putting out a good face in front of all the non-farmers out there so they understand, hey, we're managing everything, not just our crops but all our acreages as well. So we wanted to talk a little about shelter belt management and just some simple things you can do in the fall that don't take a lot of time, but you got to get them done so you have a great shelter belt going forward for the next many years. Well, you have to remember those shelter belts are really important. You see them around many farm places because they're going to block that wind out in the winter. They're going to help keep your yard a little bit cleaner from snow and those kind of things and, and reduce your heating bill in the winter. So it's important to have that protection around your farm place when, when you're living out in the country. Now, the thing that I look at is I do want to keep my fields clean. I don't want to have weeds and problems out in my fields, but a lot of those problems start in shelter belts because we're doing a nice job out in the field, but hey, if we let a few weeds go in the tree belt, all of a sudden that spreads out into the field. Or if we have the wrong weeds growing in the tree belt, now we end up with bugs getting out into the field. So what we want you to do is spray in the fall. Once the leaves start dropping off your trees, you can go out there with 2,4-D relatively safely. And yes, 2,4-D is the product we're typically talking about, but if you want to kill everything, then we'd probably be looking at Roundup. If you're going to spray Roundup, we want you to do that before the first hard killing frost. Okay. Otherwise, 2,4-D is a real good product for killing most of the broad leaves out there. So that's in terms of weed control. Bugs, there are lots of bugs that do get hosted in these weeds, like buckthorn hosts soybean aphids, for example. So get all your weeds under control. That's the first step. Then we want to look at fertility. All right. When it comes to fertility, typically trees don't need a whole lot of fertilizer put on them, unless you've got an orchard or something that's producing a lot of fruit or nuts, for example. But the fertility for the grass to make sure that you have good grass growth so you can choke out weeds. I hear so many farmers say, I don't want to put fertilizer out in the grass because then I'll have to mow it more often. That's the wrong way to look at it. We need to put enough fertility out there that we get thick grass growth. Now all of a sudden we choke out weeds like dandelions and others that are going to be coming when we have sporadic grass okay, growth. Okay, so just like in your field, we would suggest you do a soil test and then talk to an arborist. Talk to someone who knows something about trees in your area and your tree species we're talking about here. But the big thing is we're usually looking for high levels of potassium. We'd like to see 7 to 8% base saturation K. You'll get a bigger tree faster and that's really important. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is water your trees. They need water going into the winter. They've got to get themselves established. So you may have to haul some water out to trees. Darren and I used to have to do that when we were kids. But hey, you do these things. You work on maybe picking up some sticks, pruning the trees a little bit, and you can have a really nice shelter belt going into next year. Uh, one weed that you don't want to get in your shelter belts is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next.